Let's give Rob and Helen, his wife, a warm welcome this morning as he comes to speak to us. Good morning. Am I, I'm switched on down here. Yeah, that's coming through okay. Excellent. Uh, good to see a few familiar faces. Just about make you out through your masks. But uh, good to see a lot of new faces as, as well. And uh, it's nice and warm, or relatively warm in these buildings. And it's not always the easiest one to heat, isn't it? But uh, it's a warm atmosphere, very much. I really mean that. Um, in case you don't know us, uh, we've got two uh, grown up children. We moved up to Bolton 27 years ago now. How did, how did that happen? And uh, I remember we must have been 20 plus years ago when we first uh, met Dave and Nikki and uh, baby Ben. As, uh, as things were at the time. Uh, so time has moved on, isn't it? So we've got a grown-up daughter who lives in Bedford, and uh, we've got a grown-up son who, who's married, uh, who lives in Norwich, and uh, we've got a granddaughter. So we are, uh, that's sorry, they've got a daughter, we've got a granddaughter. We, it, it is delightful being grandparents. All the good things you ever hear about being grandparents are totally true. You get all the nice bits. <laughs> And uh, interestingly enough, there, um, and praise God, both our kids are, are going on with the Lord in good churches. And uh, our son and his family, uh, next month, are moving to Frankfurt in Germany, uh, following God's call uh, to join a, a church plant out there. Um, actually, probably door to door journey time will be the same as trekking all the way down to Norwich. So, those of you from here who've been to New Day, you know how far Norwich is. So hopping on a plane from Manchester to Frankfurt, uh, I think will be quite a lot simpler. Uh, anyway, in a way, maybe that's an illustration of what I want to bring to you this morning. I, I want to raise our sights. I want, I want to stir your hearts for the big picture of who we are and what God has called us to. And uh, I want us to declare, I want to put into you today that, that we that God's church are truly the hope of the world. I don't always feel like that. <laughs> you know, when I get up a bit tired or something, I, I, I don't feel that I can be really anything very much to, to anybody. But actually what God says over us and what God has put inside us, I don't care whether you feel it or not, you are the, the hope of the world. But it's so important that we, we see these things uh, through God's eyes and, and with God's heart. So let me tell you this probably mythical story. You may have heard a version of it before. That there, were, there were two factory workers on a production line making Rolls-Royce cars. Uh, these two in different parts of the factory did the same jobs, uh, just sort of fairly menial things, just sort of putting things together as they came along the production line, passing it on to the next person. And uh, an in, a regional inspector came along to the factory. So he asks the first worker, uh, what do you do? And so he tells him, well, I get this nut and this bolt and I screw this here and then I put it on and, and well, really, you know, that's, that's all I do, really. It's, it's not very much. It's, it's just a small thing. So he says, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. And then he goes over to uh, the other part of the production line where it, there's a different person doing the same thing. He says, oh, would you mind just telling me, please, you know, what, what you do, sir? What, what is your job? He, he says, uh, I am part of the best team in the world, making the best cars in the world. And if I don't do my part properly, everything fails. <laughs> How do you see yourself in the church as perhaps mostly of British heritage here? We, we can tend to play ourselves down. We're not always very confident. Oh, I'm just an insignificant individual lost in the crowd. I'm, I've not been a Christian very long or I'm, I'm not very old. I don't know very much about, about the Bible. I'm, I'm not very confident. Oh, can't we come up with all sorts of things about ourselves? But what I want to tell you today is that, that you are part of a plan that is God's idea. And I don't want to argue with what God says over me and with what God says over us. 
God's own idea is that in every age and in every nation, we have the privilege of offering and modeling the way of salvation to our friends, to our neighbors, to our work colleagues, the people we randomly bump into. We have the privilege and, and the responsibility of showing people what true life is about, and very importantly, what true community is about. Let, let me go back a few years. Let me take you back to your Old Testament. Old Testament can be a bit hazy, can't it? You know, we're, we're better on the New Testament, that stuff around Jesus. But I tell you, there's absolute riches to be discovered there. Let, let's go, let me take you back to Abraham. So when God called and chose Abraham, it, it, it was chosen out of obscurity from a pagan background. And it was God's pure grace that came to him and changed his life. It was pure grace that God made wonderful promises over him. What he would do in him, what he would do through him. And promised that eventually the whole world would be blessed through his offspring. So you might be familiar with some of the words in Genesis chapter 12. God said to Abraham, I will make you elderly, fatherless Abraham. I will make you into a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. We could be a bit uncomfortable with that, can't we? But God says that. I'm going to make your name great. And you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you, and all peoples on earth, I think all probably includes us, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And a bit later on in chapter 22, he repeats part of this promise. Through your offspring, elderly, fatherless Abraham, all nations on earth will be blessed. Wow. And then when we do look to the New Testament, it helps us to understand this. This, doesn't, this wasn't just some promise given to some obscure person of the Jewish faith, faith in what we might consider an obscure part of the world. It's just, no, the fulfillment of that promise from, what, maybe 4,000 years ago or something is that that blessing became offered to the whole world through the person of Jesus Christ. So when we look at Galatians chapter 3, it explicitly makes that link. It says, what God said to him there is for all of you. It says, talking about what Jesus has done in the cross, he redeemed us, hallelujah. In order that, okay, there's a purpose. God, God hasn't just wiped your slate clean, though that is absolutely an incredible thing. In order that, the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles, every one of us, through Christ Jesus, so that, right, here's more purpose, so that by faith we receive the promise of the Spirit. So you might have thought Abraham was, you know, that, that was, he was a good guy, yes, and he followed God and, and he came through in the end, but Abraham's promises, the promises to him, are for you and for me. So it, it says very clearly, for example, Romans 9, it's not the natural children who are God's children. In other words, it's not just the Jewish descendants, those people who live in that land of Israel. No, it is the children of the promise. Those who are legal inheritors of that promise, they're the ones who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. And through Jesus, you have an inheritance. You inherit those promises. You inherit those blessings. You are a channel of blessing to the whole world. Everyone who follows Abraham's example of faith, everyone who seeks to walk in, walk in his footsteps, inherits those same blessings and promises that God gave to Abraham. Every Christian is called a child of God. Every Christian is a channel of blessing to the whole world. So, yeah, you can say amen at that point. Well done, well done. Now, the important thing I want to say to you is, it is in our Western society and our Western thinking, 
we, we naturally think so individualistically. Uh, we, we, we're selfish without anybody trying to tell us to be selfish. Uh, and, and we so often interpret a lot of the, God, the stuff that God says uh, through, uh, through a, like a, a Western way of thinking. We, we think, oh yeah, for me. Now, you've got to put your individual faith in Jesus. Absolutely. So that, that word uh, that, that was brought earlier um, about if you know, somebody here, you're thinking about giving your life to Jesus. I urge you, you will never regret it. It's the best thing you could ever do. But here's the key thing, that so often through the Bible, it's like a strong thread running all the way through. It's you plural, it's community. You are saved for something. You are saved into something. Let me read just one passage which talks about this from Ephesians 2. You know these adverts you sometimes see for sort of, uh, you know, hair restorer or some, uh, you know, beauty thing, whatever you see. You see a before picture and an after picture and you see, you know, the person in the before picture always looks really miserable, don't they? And sort of hangdog and, and the, the after picture, they're full of the joys of spring. Well, this is the ultimate black and white picture here. And one of the ways that we appreciate the goodness and the fullness of what God has brought us into is to recognize the hopelessness that we had before he did that for us. So Ephesians 2 says this, you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel. You were foreigners to the covenants of the promise. They were there, but they weren't for you. You were without hope and without God in the world. That's a pretty bleak picture. I'm not sure if we could sink any lower than that. Without hope and without God in the world. But, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Because he came and preached peace, reconciliation, you know, peace on earth. That's the Christmas message. He preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him, through Jesus, what he has done, we both, those who were far, those who were near, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. You are no longer foreigners, no longer aliens, but fellow citizens. And here's the thing that I want to encourage you especially about. Fellow citizens with God's people members of God's household. Oh, I tell you, we need to belong. We're created to belong. Everybody wants to belong to something. You know, you go along the street and you see a certain group of people, you know, they dress the same way. There's a group identity. You go to a football match, there's an affinity people have with one another. They want to belong to something. And those things aren't, aren't usually bad. But I tell you, you can belong to the best society, the best family in the whole universe. And uh, I think you know this, but I do so want to emphasize that. It is not what color you are. It's not about how you're dressed. It's not about whether you're well educated or, or not. It's about what God says about you. It's about how you've responded to him. It's not our idea. It's not a, a, uh, the fruit of our thinking. It's God's proclamation. It's God's declaration to us. Our access to God is on the work, uh, based on the work of Christ on the cross. It's a level playing field. Those who thought they might be well qualified are brought down. Those who thought they would never qualify are brought up. It is a living, level playing field. All have access to the Father by one Spirit. You are together as equals in the body of Christ. And it's not just that you're blessed. It's just that God wants you, every one of you and all of you together, to be a blessing. So uh, in 1 Peter 2, Peter echoes much the same thing as Paul has said in Ephesians. You are now a chosen people. <laughs> I think back to uh, my days at school. I wasn't terribly good at sport. And, you know, I hope you ladies can identify with this, but certainly the lads will. You know, oh, let's pick teams. 
oh yeah, you know, you choose the best striker first and the other guy chooses somebody. I was usually towards the end. Okay, well, I suppose you might as well come here. You know, you can get in the way of somebody. That's about the limit of my footballing ability, you know. But you're chosen. You're chosen. A chosen people. A royal, kingly priesthood. Ones who minister to God, who receive from God and, and minister to others through his power. A holy nation, set aside from all the rubbish, set aside from all the other distractions to the one thing which is supposed to capture your gaze, the beauty of Jesus. So that, his purpose again, you are saved for a purpose. You are made a people for a purpose. What is this purpose? So that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness, out of that hopelessness, remember, out of, out of being those aliens, out of that into his wonderful light. The context of this is, is let your light shine. I think most of you would be very familiar with when Jesus talked about us being the light of the world and the salt of the earth. You, plural, you together are the light of the world. He talked about a city being on a hill. A city isn't one household. A city isn't one person just doing their little bit, keeping their noses clean. A city is people. A city is relationships. A city is a culture. You are a beautiful city. You are creating a culture. The way you respond to one another, the way you're patient with one another, the way you encourage and, and, uh, and provoke one another to good works. You are a city creating a culture of welcome as people come into your midst. That is light in the darkness. That Anyone can walk through this door and know that they are valuable and they are accepted. You do not get that wherever you go. <laughs> You, some of you would most definitely have suffered discrimination. Uh, not necessarily anybody's been nasty to you, but, but you, know, you know the looks on people. You know the, you know the little things that aren't said. You, should, you can walk in here and you're on a level, level playing field with every single other person because together you're a chosen people. Together you are the light of the world. And just a quick word about what Jesus said about the salt of the earth. The world really needs you. <laughs> but the, the primary idea of this picture that Jesus is talking about isn't, oh, let's just give a little bit of flavor to the food. Salt, remember, was preservatives. It was, it was mostly the only way of particularly something like meat preserving it from going bad. So what is this saying? If the world out there doesn't have you, what's going to happen to it? It's going to get very bad. And don't we see that? You're needed out there. You're needed to get into the food. You're needed to get into that meat to preserve it. If you don't, it will decay. It is absolutely inevitable. It will decay, but you are the salt of the earth. Relationships can be mended because people see your relationships. Hopelessness can be, can be uh, averted because you are offering hope to people. It is you together. It is you, the people of God. We only truly see who we are as individual Christians when we know who we are as part of God's people together. <laughs> and the last bit that I would want to talk about uh, is just in the same way as, uh, as individuals, we need to be part of a local community like this. I want to take you an extra step. So we, as if I was living here in the world, we as a local church only discover who we truly are, the fullness of what the Bible says about us, when we, the church, are functioning in its proper setting. Okay, so the, the setting for the individual is the local church. What's the setting for the local church? Well, as we read through the book of Acts, we see Paul and the other apostles, they traveled around in teams, they preached the gospel, they helped to establish local churches led by respected elders. What did they end up with? They ended up with something like a federation of churches linked to one another 
in relationship. They knew each other. They wrote letters to one another. They sent teams to one another. They had a common vision and values served by the the ongoing input of of the apostles and other guys who traveled around. For example, in Corinthians, uh, he's saying to them, remember the, the guys who are struggling because of the famine over the other side of the Mediterranean. Remember to get your offering in. Your brothers and sisters over there need you. And somebody was going around the different churches. They were friends together. They were serving the Lord together. And we, as a church here, us as a church in Bolton, we are just trying to put that into practice in the way that we do, shall we say, churches together. So New Frontiers, our family, many other families like it around the world, but our family called New Frontiers, originally led uh, by Terry Virgo, is founding as its founding father. We are one such federation or family of churches. I don't know if you know now, I don't think anybody really knows the number because uh, when you give away leadership and when you give things away to people, it's quite actually hard to keep track of things, but that's a good thing. There are probably over 2,000 churches around the world now which are part of the New Frontiers family. Over 100 nations. God has done amazing things over the years. And then you'd probably be familiar that within that uh, overarching family of New Frontiers, there's different groups who are sort of functioning in different places. Ours is called Christ Central. Uh, I'm sure Jeremy has been here in the last year or two, or certainly, certainly sometime. Jeremy Sinkins, you might have seen him on the video to do with uh, uh, Devoted and Offering and stuff like that. Again, just our little part of God's family is nearly 300 churches in over 25 nations in Europe, in North America, in South America, in Africa and Asia. You are bigger than the will. You are bigger than the UK. You are part of something that God is doing around the world. You have something to give to the world and you have something that you need to receive from the world. So just as, as part of this family, we're, we're encouraging these things that I've been saying. You know, be part of the family. Serve one another. Love one another. Use the gifts of the Spirit to build up the body together. Don't be individuals. Be a community together. In just the same way as this is saying, let us together make sure that we are playing our part in God's worldwide family. Let us make sure that we're, we're getting people in where we're needing them, that we're, we're looking at things together, we're doing more things together than we could if we were just by ourselves. Let me finish this by, by just uh, telling you, or perhaps for some of you, reminding you how things look like in our locality. It's got to be grounded, hasn't it? It's got to be real. And uh, Dave explained that Helen and I, together uh, with Graham and Charlotte Webb from Liverpool, uh, we're serving our particular area of churches around the northwest Manchester, Lancashire, Merseyside, Cheshire, uh, 13, 14 churches and plants, something like that. The, the, the leaders of, of those churches, we meet regularly, we meet every month for friendship for prayer, for teaching. There's a regular flow of ministry between our churches and our leadership teams trying together to put into practice these, these clear biblical principles uh, that, that we see. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, I know a lot of your youngsters, you'll have been to New Day, joining several other thousand youngsters uh, across the nation. I really pray that can happen this, this Sunday. Really pray that COVID doesn't interfere with that again. But there's prayer events, there's teaching events, there's training events, uh, sometimes for leaders, sometimes uh, for anybody. Uh, in our congregations and uh, again COVID permitting we pray this year with the devoted summer camp not happening uh, that there's going to be something for families there's going to be a leaders conference Uh, we're we're really praying that we can put something on for our northwest churches to which I would strongly encourage all of you to buy into there's so many times I've uh, heard somebody say to me when they've gone say to one of these bigger events Oh yeah, that stuff that you or Dave or whatever was kept going on about, I get it now. You see it, you feel it, you touch it, 
you suddenly know you belong to something bigger. Uh, and so although I would encourage you, for example, go on the Christ Central website. Go on the New Frontiers website. There's loads of, of sermons there. Uh, there's loads of information about projects that are happening. But remember, we're first of all people. We don't just sign up for a list. We are people with one another desiring to serve God together. We are friends together on that mission. So whatever your part is in the local church, play it. Whatever your part is in the bigger scene, make sure you play it. Let me go back to the beginning. Who do you think you are? Do you respond more like that first person on the production line? Well, not very much. Don't do very much. Not very important. Remember, that's not what God says about you. You are part of the best idea in the universe. You are part of God's plan A. And there isn't a plan B, because it's not needed. You are plan A. Be what you truly are, not just individually, but corporately. You really are the hope of the world. And every single one of us has the privilege and responsibility of being part of that. I encourage you, I urge you, what does that look like for you? Does it need your thinking changed? Does it need your heart changed? Do you just need to get off your backside and do something? <laughs> Whatever it is, you make sure you are following what the Holy Spirit wants, wants you to do. Before I hand back to Dave, let, let me just give a, a couple of things. When I, I was praying beforehand and, and just saying, Lord, are there any particular things that you want to highlight uh, prophetically for any individuals here? And uh, there was a couple of things. These might apply to more than one person. And uh, I, I did feel that, that some of you uh, over the last few weeks, maybe for good reasons like COVID, you, you, you're sort of feeling worse to the effect of, I just feel disconnected from church. I just feel disconnected from God. And I, I want to encourage you first, God is not blaming you for that. God is not criticizing for you for that. But what he says to you is, is, I want to plug you in. You know, when you just get hold of a plug for some electrical device, and you, there's, there's sometimes, you know, sometimes if you're not really looking, you're fiddling around trying to find the right place, sometimes it just slides in. God wants to slide you in, plug you in. He has just the right place for you. Be encouraged. And then secondly, I felt there might be some people who, again, because of the difficulties that have been, and uh, there were plenty of difficulties in life before COVID as well, weren't there? <laughs> you, you know, you're sort of feeling or asking the sort of question, well, who am I really? What, what is life about? And, and I think that God would gently and graciously say to you, don't look in the wrong place. You, you're not going to find the answer to that by looking inside you. It's not by your own thoughts. In Psalm 73, I encourage you to go away and, and read this. The, the, the person who wrote that psalm is saying, oh, why, why is this? What's this all about? There's all this stuff happening in the world. And, and he's getting down by it and he doesn't understand it. And then he says, let me quote verse 16 and 17. When, when I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply until I entered the sanctuary of God, then I understood. The answer is not inside us. The answer is God and his love for you and what he says to you and what he speaks over you and what he wants to do inside of you. Lift your heart, lift your eyes, lift your gaze. I tell you, God loves you far more than you'll ever, ever know. Just as you are, right now he really is hope for the hopeless he really is the one who lifts the downtrodden and the needy he's the one uh, who in another place in the bible it says he he lifts people off the ash heap you know what are the ashes the stuff that's burnt out the stuff that's no good for anything the stuff that's just thrown outside it says he lifts the needy off the ash heap and makes them into princes. <laughs> Not just lift them off the ash heap, 
Now that's pretty good. But he makes them into princes in his royal kingdom. And I'm sure princess, princes includes princesses as well. <laughs> so let, let, me, let me pray. Lord, I, I pray especially for individuals who might feel those two things uh, apply to them, Lord. Oh God, I thank you. You are so gracious and kind and merciful, Lord God. Uh, Lord, you, you love every one of us so dearly, but you, you especially, Lord God, meet the, 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 uh, come to the needy, Lord. Those who are, are lowly, those who know their need of you, Lord. And I, I, I pray, Holy Spirit, comforter, strengthener, would you come alongside uh, those who say, yeah, I, I feel a bit lost. I feel a bit disconnected. And would you show them again, Lord, just how much you love them and what you speak over them. And, and I want to pray, Lord, for all of us here. And, and I, I say, Lord, give, give Dave and, and the, the other leaders, Lord God, great wisdom in, in leading this, this community, Lord, in leading this group of people, Lord. Oh, God, may every person here together know who they are, what you say over them, what you have called them to. And, Lord, we, we just so thank you for what you have done. Jesus, that you have made it possible as we were singing uh, the lyrics of some of those, those songs, Lord. You have made it possible, Lord God. You are the one who has conquered all. You are the one who has raised forever and ever and ever. And you call us to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.